let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for bringing us together today for this first Bible study of the year. We thank you because you granted us the heart of faithfulness to gather be together before you and to come to learn at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that this desire that you have given us will never die out from our lives in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we are praying that all through this year you will help us to always come and listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the saints of God. Father, we pray that as we come every Monday, we'll take notice of your word and we'll know what you are teaching us and leading us to. And we pray, Lord, that your word coming into our lives will literally transform us and change us from glory unto glory in Jesus' name. Lord, as we begin to study today, we are praying that you will give us an understanding heart. Give us the wisdom to understand so that we'll be able to have the best from your word this year in Jesus' name. Teach us today. Help us to come to appreciate more of the revelation of your word in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know that the spirit of truth, of revelation, will be upon us today. And you reveal your truth to every one of us. Clear all doubts. Grant us stability in our faith. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we come to the first Bible study of the year. And already as you have got the outline in your hand, you'll see that we're starting our study this year from the book of Genesis. And today we're studying in Genesis chapter 1. Today we're studying from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. As we study today, you will need to open up your heart, your spirit, to the word of God. You see, there's always something new, something fresh, something deep in the word of God. And we shouldn't come to the position where we say, I think I know everything already in that part of the Bible. We should come before the Lord and we should say, Lord, in this new year, in this new study, what I saw not before, teach thou me, so that I'll be able to know more about my God. I'll be able to know more of his revelation to my life. So that I'll become a person that is stable, established in the truth, not like children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but I'll become so established, so confirmed in the truth, that I will be able to help teach and admonish others also. So come with that humble attitude as we begin our series of studies for the year. Genesis is the first book in the divine library, the Holy Bible, given to man through revelation from God. Genesis, as a book of beginnings, reveals to us the origins of the heavens and the earth, that is, the origin of all things that are created. It declares God as a personal creator and relates the account of the creation then tells us the account of the fall and then reveals to us in seed form in a promise or in a prediction yet to come and yet to be fulfilled it reveals to us the redemption of the human race through the Lord Jesus Christ around this account in Genesis around the account of the creation, the fall, and the redemption of the human race. Around that centers all divine revelation and scripture truth. Think about it. All you read about in the historical part of the Old Testament, all you will read about in the prophets in the Old Testament, 
All you will read about in the times of the kings in the Old Testament. All the accounts that you read in the Old Testament, dealing with individuals, dealing with families, dealing with a whole nation, or even dealing with other nations, everything is pointing and driving to the redemption of man through the Lord Jesus Christ. May come in plain statement. May come in prophetic language. It may come in the typology that is in the types, like illustrations in the Old Testament, but everything centers around what we have already discovered or what we shall discover in Genesis. When you come on to the New Testament, you will discover that the New Testament goes right back to begin to reveal again and explain once again the fulfillment of all that we're studying in Genesis on the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Genesis is the foundation then of the whole Bible. And this book of Genesis is essential to the correct understanding of every part of Scripture. The book of Genesis is given by inspiration of God, just like the whole Bible. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for correction, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, complete, and mature, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Moses was the inspired writer of the entire Pentateuch. What we call Pentateuch is the first five books of the Old Testament. You as a student of the Bible, you should know that name, Pentateuch. That means Genesis to Deuteronomy. Moses was the inspired writer to write the entire Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. It is referred to in the Old Testament and in the New Testament as the law or the book of the law. The unerring spirit of God directed Moses in writing all the details in the book of Genesis. The whole book is so consistent everywhere with itself, so correct in its dates, so impartial in its biography, so accurate in its philosophical details, so pure in its morality, and so benevolent in its design as to amply demonstrate that it could never have had an earthly origin. That means to say that it has a divine, supernatural, heavenly origin, telling us that it is God himself that has revealed all the accounts we're going to read, all the accounts we're going to study, that this Genesis, the first book of the Bible, is inspired of God. The story today that we have is going to be in chapter 1. And it's a story concerning God, the creator of all things. God, the creator of all things. Look at verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God, God alone. God without the angels. God without the help of a scientist. God without the help of mortal man. Man was not even made at that time. God, all alone, in all power, all his might, in all the ability that he had, he created the heaven and the earth. In verse 6, And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament. It was God that created everything. And that's what we're studying about today. God, the creator of all things. As we study this chapter, we're going to divide the chapter into three parts. Number one, God the creator Number two Steps of creation 
Number three, the creation of man. There is so much for us to learn that you really need to pay attention and you'll need to refer to all the passages of scripture we'll be referring to. And I'm sure you have a biro in your hand or a pencil in your hand. You'll want to be marking these references in the Bible. And if there are references that are read, not on your outline, you will want to write those references down. You see, these Bible studies train us. And if we're going to become teachers of the word ourselves, if we're going to become evangelists and pastors in the future, if we're going to become ministers of the gospel, it is the word of God we're learning from week to week, from day to day, from study to study in our series that will really be preparing you for a greater ministry in the kingdom of God. So, there are references not on the outline that we're reading. You make sure you mark everything down. And you meditate upon all that you are hearing so that this word will bear fruit in your life. Now, point one. God, the Creator. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light and there was light you see the majesty of that verse you see the power of our God and you see the authority with which he spoke and you see the speed in which it was done he spoke and it was confirmed God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And then the whole chapter goes on to show us how step by step God created the heavens, the sky, the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies of heaven, that is, of all the skies, and also all the earth, and everything that you have therein. This chapter goes on to affirm and to declare very clearly, unmistakably, that God, in His power, created everything. Nehemiah chapter 9 Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 6 Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 6 Thou, even thou, art Lord alone Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens With all their host, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas, and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipped thee. Here is a Bible believer, here is a believer in God, affirming and confirming that God created the heavens and the earth and all things we find therein. If you are a believer in God, you believe that God is the creator. Everyone who believes in God, believes that God is powerful enough, great enough, wise enough, mighty enough, intelligent enough to create the whole world, to create the whole universe. If a person does not believe God, God that he can create the whole world is an infidel. It's an atheist. It's a person that has seen a beautiful house and he doesn't know that there has to be a builder. 
that a beautiful house cannot just come up without a builder. Or he has a wristwatch. And he's using that wristwatch that is intricately designed. And is working so precisely. And this fellow doesn't know that that wristwatch must have been, must have had a manufacturer. You see a beautiful world like this? With the forest, with the ocean, with all the things in the ocean, and with the land, and with all the creeping things, and with the stars, and with everything there is, both the visible and the invisible. And you cannot tell that there must have been a creator. There must have been a, a hand that fashioned and formed and created and made everything. Yes, there is God, powerful, mighty, great, wonderful enough that He created the heavens and the earth. Job chapter 26, verse 7. He stretched out the north over the empty space and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Have you seen the beauty of that verse? That God stretched out the north over the empty space and hangeth the earth upon nothing. If you have ever seen in the geography class, or maybe if you have ever seen in anyone's office, the whole earth like a globe, like a bulb that is round just able to revolve and yet there is no pillar supporting it and there is nothing on which it is hung that's what revelation is telling us here before these scientists discovered that the scripture had already written that that the whole earth is hung upon nothing and so we know that God created the whole earth Yes, he has the power, and he did it. In Psalm 102, verse 25. Psalm 102, verse 25. Of old, as thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hand. We have no doubt that the psalmist was inspired of God, and his eyes was made to see, the vision of the Lord. He had the revelation of the Lord. And here is the revelation is telling us about that God himself created the heavens and the earth. Psalm 33 from verse 6. Psalm 33 from verse 6. By thy watch, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. That confirms Genesis chapter 1. God said, Let there be. And there was. What does the scripture say here? By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the dead. In storehouses, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. For He spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. It's just a confirmation of Genesis chapter 1. Some people say they do not believe Genesis chapter 1, but they believe the rest of the Bible. How? unreasonable that will be because all the other parts of the Bible confirm the account in Genesis. In fact you will see as we study on that Jesus Christ himself, the son of the living God, Jesus the truth, and Jesus that knew all things and nothing could be hidden away from him do you know, he confirmed the truth and the validity of Genesis chapter 1. Are you wiser than the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know the truth more than the Lord Jesus Christ? If you are a Christian, a follower of Christ, you will say, Christ believed it. And I believe it because I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had understanding and knowledge and he knew the truth. 
In fact, it's the personification of the old truth. And he confirmed Genesis chapter 1. How then can a follower of Jesus Christ be in any doubt? No, it cannot be. Actually, you see, when you are born again, and you have Jesus Christ in you, Jesus the truth will be confirming and affirming the truth in your heart. The moment you have that living faith in Christ, you will find that that living faith in Christ will make you to believe the scripture. What does Isaiah say concerning God? As creator, you know, Isaiah is that prophet in the Old Testament that spoke so much about Christ, so much about the glory, so much about redemption, so much about the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is what he said about the creation in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. As thou not known, as thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator. Can you see that? Isaiah said, have you not known? It's like saying, don't you know God? Don't you believe in God? Have you not by grace, by faith, been attached and reconciled unto Him? And have you not heard? Have you not learned? Don't you know as of now? How can you say you know any truth of scripture without knowing that God is creator? Then he said that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Very clearly we know that God is creator. Creator of the ends of the earth. Now, the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, after they were baptized in the Holy Ghost, you know what Jesus told them? Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost has come, He will guide you into all truth. When the Holy Ghost has come, He will teach you all things. Let's see what the Holy Ghost taught them. Let's see what the Holy Ghost revealed unto them. And let's see that what the Holy Ghost revealed unto them as they were filled full of the Holy Ghost, they were, uh, it was about the creation as well. In Acts chapter 4, verse 24. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, verse 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. I don't think there should be any doubt in you now. See that these spirit-filled apostles with one accord, no disagreement among them, no doubt within them. They said, Thou art God. And they said, You created the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. So then we see that God is the creator. And as you have faith in the Lord, you believe that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By, the, by faith we understand that the worlds, that means the earth and the planets and the stars, everything, that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The uniform testimony of all scripture given by inspiration of God is that God created the heavens and the earth. God is the creator of the universe and all that is in it. Now, what do we learn from all this? We learn a lot of things from all this. Number one, that God is so great that He can create all the visible world that we can see. 
and all the material world, even the things that we cannot see. What does that tell us? It tells us this, that if God can create the whole world, then he can do anything. He can do anything. That's why we're saying God can do anything, anything. God can do anything. What gives us that conviction? Oh, because we know He created the heavens and the earth, the moon and the stars, the sun and the planets, all that we can see. And the scientists, they tell us that the sky actually expands and goes on millions and millions of miles. And if God can do all that, we know God can do anything and everything. That's the conviction God Himself gives us. He himself says, since he created the earth and he created the universe, he says, what do you think is impossible for him? Him that has such power that he could make everything. He said, what else can he not do? That's in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. Ah, Lord God, Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, and stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. That's the conclusion we make from the whole thing. That because God created the heavens and the earth, then he can do all things. Apply that to your life. Maybe you are a sinner. Maybe you have not known the Lord. And you think it is impossible for you to overcome your life of sin. Well, why don't you think about God? So great, so powerful, so mighty, that He created all things. Then He can recreate you. If your life today is without form and void. If your life today is without order. And there is darkness that covers all of your life grows darkness upon every area of your life. Why don't you think of this? That God who created the whole universe, He can stretch out His mighty hand and He can make you a new creature. If you will come to Christ, if you just say, Lord, I have tried and failed. I cannot live a righteous life. My life is all in confusion. There is so much darkness in my life. And there is so much sin and corruption and evil in me. Everything is disorganized that I'm even fed up with my kind of life, the life I'm living. I come to you. I repent of my sin. I turn away from my evil, making me a new creation. And you come into Christ. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll find out something. That God created the heavens and the earth. And there is nothing too hard for Him. He can change you. He can transform you. He can make you a new creature. Now, another thing is this. You, you see, there are people, when we talk of holiness and sanctification, when we talk of purity of heart, that a person in the heart can live without any evil thought, any evil imagination, that the Adamic nature, the human, the depravity of the heart, the carnality of the heart, can be uprooted and taken away and God can actually perfect that heart of yours. Some people say, how can that be possible? Think of this again. A this God made the heavens and the earth. And if he did, what can you say is impossible for him? Oh yes, he can do all things. Remember again, God can do anything, anything. God can do anything. He has created the heavens and the earth. He can recreate you. He can sanctify you. He can purify you. Do you know this? When we talk about being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. Not just influenced by the Holy Ghost. Not just touched by the Holy Ghost. But you are so baptized and immersed in the Holy Ghost. That actually you speak in a language you have never learned. Some people say... Can you think how that will ever be possible? That man can pray. And God will just send the Holy Ghost upon him. 
and he'll be so enveloped and baptized in the Holy Ghost that he'll actually begin to speak another language a language you have never learned and you say how can these things be once again come back to this creation that if God can create the whole universe out of nothing you see that out of nothing he can bring about everything out of the nothing the language you have never learned God can bring you that heavenly language just fill you with anointing with power with the Holy Ghost now another thing we learn is this you know if a person has manufactured a wristwatch if that wristwatch goes bad I can take that wristwatch back to him and say you are the manufacturer now can you help me and repair the wristwatch or if somebody has manufactured a particular vehicle or a particular company has manufactured a vehicle or a particular company has manufactured a sewing machine if that sewing machine or that vehicle goes bad I can take it right back to the manufacturer and I say if you have wisdom if you have the tools if you have the knowledge if you have all the mechanism to be able to create and to be able to manufacture this then you can repair it what do we learn from there God created us this body of ours he created us because of that if we're sick what do we do we go back to God some people say how can I believe that God will heal me well very simple if God has enough power to be able to create or originally don't you think God can easily heal and take away that little pain take away and mend that broken bone and be able to touch that kidney and be able to touch that intestine he can he can because he created you originally so that's what we're learning that because God could do all this in the original creation there is nothing impossible for him today now let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 Genesis chapter 1 I need to point something out to you in Genesis chapter 1 actually this book of Genesis or this first chapter of Genesis is filled with the name of God and that's what we expect because God is the central actor God is the main actor and God is the one that creates everything and because it's talking about creation it talks about God 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 all the time look at it and i'll just point to you a number of places where god is mentioned in genesis chapter 1 and you will see that god himself and god alone dominates this chapter 1 of genesis let's start from verse 1 in the beginning god created that's the name verse 2 latter part of verse 2 and the spirit of god moved Verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Verse 4, And God saw the light, that it was good. Verse 5, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Verse 7, And God made the firmament and divided the waters. Can you see the name of God just coming on and on and on? Let's go on. Verse 7, God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. It has to be so. Once God acts, in his might, in his power, it has to be so. Verse 8, And God called the firmament heaven. Verse 9, And God said, Verse 10, And God called the dry land earth. Verse 11, And God said, Now you can go on like that, Until you come to verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image. Verse 27, And God, so God created man in his own image. Verse 28, And God blessed them. Verse 29, And God said, Verse 31, And God saw. 
everything that he had made and behold it was very good now you have seen that the name of God dominates chapter 1 of Genesis because the power of God is the only power the creative power the supernatural power that is acting in Genesis chapter 1 that's why we find him and a mention of his name dominating in that Genesis chapter 1 let me point something to you the name God that appears in this Genesis chapter 1 most of the time is in the plural Elohim in the original language the name Elohim the use of the plural implies and confirms the plurality of the Godhead now that's very clear as you see it from chapter 1 verse 26 God said let us make man in our image at our likeness so you will see that God uses the plural word concerning himself the plural pronouns us and our occurring in this verse that we have read together now affirm that the creation of man and the creation of the whole universe was the joint work of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Ghost there are some people that will erroneously teach that Jesus is the Father and Jesus is the Son and Jesus is the Holy Ghost that there is only one personality in the Godhead but no from right from Genesis chapter 1 we're told about the plurality of personality in the Godhead let us make man in our image after our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth chapter 3 reading from verse 22 and the Lord God said behold the man is become as one of us God said behold the man is become as one of us can you see that plurality again in the Godhead let's look at Genesis chapter 11 reading from verse 6 all through to verse 8 and the Lord said behold the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do go to let us go down that's God talking let us go down verse 8 so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth so we have learned that God is creator God is creator let's go to point two steps of creation in Genesis chapter 1 looking at it from verse 3 all through to verse 27 now we'll not read all over again every verse let me just point out to you that God did an act of creation at a time that God went gradually God went step by step in great wisdom and order why because God is not the author of confusion and he does all things systematically well you see this is teaching us a lesson that we as children of God we should let all things be done decently and in order look at them in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 3 to verse 5 we have what he did on the first day on the first day and when I say day it's exactly what the Bible says look at verse 5 and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day 
there are some unbelieving people. And they will say that they actually means thousands and millions and billions of years. Because they do not believe that God could have done all that in one day. They do not have faith in the power of God, in the omnipotence of God. But you see, the Bible says the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, on the second day, we're told from verses 6 to 8, what God did, what He made, what He created on the second day. From verse 9, all through to verse 13, we'll see what God made or created or did on the third day. And then from verse 14, from verse 14 all through to verse 19, you will see what God did on the fourth day. From verse 20 to verse 25, we have the account of what He did on the fifth day. And then verse 26, with verse 27, what He did on the sixth day. So then we learn that God is a God of order. God is not a God of confusion. He does one thing, then He does another thing. Now we should learn from God because we're told in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And there is an area where we need to follow the footsteps of the Lord. Where we need to follow the actions of God. That God, in His wisdom, He went a step at a time. And there was no confusion. There was order. You see, when Christ has come into your life, you become born again. You are a child of God. What you find is that there will be order, there will be decency in your life. There are a number of people that they just go through life confused, scattered, haphazard, and they do not really have a defined pattern. And they cannot do one thing, finish it up well, before they go to the next thing. They just jump from one thing to the other. They, they start on point one or they start making something or they start doing something it may be business but they do not finish up that they jump on another thing they do not finish that they jump on another thing today we learn from the actions of God that as God went a step at a time and he finished up one thing and after finishing that one thing up he examined it and he saw that it was good. Then he went to the next scene. He teaches us then that our lives should be well regulated. You do one thing well, evaluate it, examine it, see that it is all well done before you go to another thing that is to be done. Now you see there are some other people too. Their families are all in confusion. There's no order in the family. You come into the house and everything is in confusion. You come into the house and there is no order. And the children don't know where, where to put their feet or what to do. And the, the head of the home is not putting everything in order. We should put our lives in order. You come to a district church sometimes and you find why the people are not actually getting anything done. Is that uh, a project is started, a program is started, something is being done. It's not done to finality. And then we go to another thing. There's no order. And uh, there is no excellence in anything and everything that is done. Let's follow after the Lord and do things once at a time. Then in our own Christian lives, you know, there are some people that are not well ordered in their Christian experiences. And uh, you find some people that are praying, sanctify me, sanctify me. They are not even born again yet. In Christian experience, in the new creation, God wants order. 
first of all, make sure that you are born again. Don't be in a hurry. Make sure that you are born again. Repent of your sin. Call upon the name of the Lord. Make sure your sins are cleansed away. Make sure that new life has come. Grace has entered into your heart. There is a witness of the Spirit of God that now you are a child of God. After that, once that is settled, and you know you are really scripturally saved, then you can go on to the next step. You must be sanctified. Consecrate. Devote yourself to the Lord. Have a strong desire. And pray fervently that this sanctification will be done. Your heart will be purified. After that has been done. With the evidence of the overflowing, consuming love of God in your heart. And with the experience of unity. Unity with the Lord Unity in the scripture, unity with the people of God, and you know you are really sanctified. After that, go on and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. We must make sure that this orderliness is in our lives. Now you see some people that are planning to get married. They're so much, maybe joyful, and so much excited about it, that everything comes to confusion. They do not know they need to go a step at a time. First, pray and pray through. When that has been very definite, there is no iota of doubt in your heart. And you have checked up, allowing the Spirit of God to examine your method. Allowing the Scriptures to bear on your way of saying that you are getting married. Then you know that you will tell the church. A step at a time. After you have told the church, and you know that you have done your part, still which... Then they will do everything that needs to be done. Eventually you might be allowed go and tell the brother. Or if you are a sister. You might be allowed go and see the brother. After you have seen him or her. Then again wait. A step at a time. No confusion. And then after you have agreed together. You go back. After you know the will of God. Go back to that same marriage committee. A step at a time. Then the time to see your parents. Then the courtship. And in preparing for the wedding, make sure that you prepare for everything a step at a time. This is what we have learned. And in all this, we see the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 19. The Lord, by wisdom, has founded the earth. By understanding, he has established the heavens. Psalm 104, verse 24. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. In Romans chapter 11, verse 33. The writer also celebrates, that means rejoices in the wisdom of God. In, Pro, in uh, Romans chapter 11 verse 33. Oh, the death of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. The steps of creation day by day. As we look at them, are most wonderful. God first brought into existence the earth, then created the firmament, and later all other things in the appropriate order. Such is the wisdom of our God. God's great purpose was to provide the world for man. In order that man should be sustained here in life, it was necessary that the earth be fully prepared for the creating of life. God let no step untaken to prepare this earth perfectly for man to live in. The beauty, the fullness, the usefulness of his handiwork is beyond description. Let's now go to point three. The creation of man. The creation of 
of man. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. And God said, Let us make man in our image, at our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Very clearly in this scripture we are told that God created man. How did he create man? Let's see. You see the way he created Adam and the way he created Eve. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul that's how Adam was created in that same chapter 2 verse 21 and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. In chapter 5 of Genesis, verses 1 and 2. This is the book of the generations of Adam, in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him, male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. I told you before that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, affirmed the truth of Genesis chapter 1. Let's see that in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. As Christ confirmed, the truth of Genesis chapter 1. Matthew chapter 19, reading from verse 4. And he said, and he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Have ye not read? What's he referring to? He's referring to Genesis. How do we know? He which made them at the beginning. And that's what we're studying today. How God made them at the beginning. And Jesus said, Have ye not read? And he believed what had been written. That God made them male and female. What do we learn from all this? Number one. That God made us. And therefore, we are not like orphans, just roaming about in this world. Because God made us, and He put us here, we are responsible unto God. In Psalm 100, verse 3. Psalm 100, verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He which has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people. And the sheep of his pasture. What we learn is that it's God himself who has made us. Because it is God who has made us, we need to respect him. We need to honor him. We need to appreciate him for creating us and for making us, for giving us the chance to live over here on earth. That's why if we're striving or rebelling or fighting with the almighty God, there is a cause upon the people that rebel against the Lord their maker. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 9. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 9. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Woe unto him 
that striveth with his maker. There is a curse upon the people that strive against God, fight against God, rebel against God. The people that disobey the word of the Lord he is our creator. Therefore, we should honor him. He is our creator. Therefore, we should worship him. He is our maker. Therefore, we should obey him. What else do we learn? We learn also that because God has created us, we must not oppress any man. Because, you see, if you oppress a man, or you oppress a woman, or you oppress the poor, you are oppressing someone that God has created. And there should not be any partiality as we deal with people because of the knowledge we have that God has made everyone. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 2 Proverbs chapter 22 verse 2 The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. The Lord is the maker of them all. Another thing we learn from the fact that God has made us, especially that he has made us in his own image, after his own similitude, is that we should not abuse men. We should not curse people. Because you see, if we do, we are cursing those that are made in the image, in the similitude of God. James chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith cause we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. We shouldn't abuse people. We shouldn't curse people. We shouldn't injure people because men and women are made after the similitude of God. Another thing we learn is that we shouldn't kill anyone because people are made in the image of God. Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. That's why a child of God will not commit abortion for any reason. A child of God will not use chemicals or pills or anything to destroy life because man has been made in the image of God. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness verse 27 so god made so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him what does that mean that god created man in his own image after his own likeness is he talking about physical similarity between almighty god and mortal man, let the scripture answer. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. In righteousness and true holiness. God created man holy, pure, righteous, perfect. That's what God still expects of us today. Because that was his original design. His original plan and purpose. That man will be holy and righteous and pure. And today he wants us to be pure and holy. That's why the Bible says, As he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. For he has said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Now let's turn to Genesis chapter 1. Let's round up as we prepare to pray. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good. After God had made what he made, he looked over it. 
and he saw that it was so and he saw that it was good the latter part of verse 10 and God saw that it was good the latter part of verse 12 and God saw that it was good you can see how God looked over everything that he did every day a step at a time and he made sure that it was good before proceeding before going on latter part of verse 18 and God saw that it was good the latter part of verse 21 and God saw that it was good latter part of verse 25 and God saw that it was good now verse 31 and God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day at the end of each day at the end of the whole week of creation God took minute notice of all that he had done and he pronounced his work good we learn a lesson from that we ought to learn a lesson from the manner in which God reviewed each phase of his work at the end of each day everyone should look back over all his works all his words all his actions and thoughts of the day to be sure that all conforms to God's word and God's will and then at the end of the week while preparing to enter into the new week preparing for the day of the Lord at the end of that week each of us should look over the events of the week to ascertain that all is well between our soul and the Lord the Bible exhorts us to always examine ourselves to see whether we still be in the faith to prove ourselves to examine our works to see how we're living we learned so much today and we'll need to take all this that we have learned to the Lord in prayer I want you to rise up and bring everything you have learned today one by one to the Lord in prayer can I just uh, counsel that whoever is standing on the uh, pulpit should pray for himself just you pray for yourself instead of leading the people to pray take time this year let each of us take time to really pray to really pray we have all learned we have all learned it's not only the members that have learned not only the workers that have learned we have all learned the word of god this is time to forget every other person and think about yourself and take everything to the lord in prayer do you have that firm faith that god is the creator of all things reveal your faith to the lord the confidence you have in the lord reveal it unto the lord you pray and you tell the lord oh yes lord i believe oh yes lord i believe you are the creator of the heavens and the earth the creator of all things pray in all the message you have heard today get on your knees and pray or stand on your feet and pray that we believe that this Genesis was inspired of God we believe that all things that we see now they were made out of things which did not appear we did not exist see how the Lord went a step at a time are you that organized in your life are you that orderly in your life concerning your Christian experiences have you been orderly saved and certain that you are saved after that getting sanctified making sure that is done firm and you know it before you reach on to being baptized in the Holy Ghost seeing that God created the heavens and the earth do you know do you believe that God can do anything is your family life ordered 
the actions and the activities of your life are they well ordered and see what we have learned about the creation of man we are responsible to God because he made us we shouldn't disobey God dishonor God disrespect God or be rebels against God why because there's a cause on the people that strive with their maker We shouldn't oppress people because they are made in the image of God. Neither should we abuse or destroy anyone. Neither should we kill or commit abortion because man is made in the image of God. And God wants us to get that image back that we have lost. The righteousness and the true holiness. He wants it back in our lives. And he wants us to systematically examine everything we do at the end of each day. And everything we do at the end of each week. To make sure that all is well between your soul and the Lord. Pray. Make sure that the word sinks in. And transforms your life as you pray before you leave today. 